I've been lying to myself for the last 34 years of my life. And while I can't claim to know how long it's been going on, you have been lying to yourself too. In fact, you are the biggest liar that there is. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to point at you, not you. <laughs> not you. Maybe you. Definitely you, sir. <laughs> we all lie to ourselves. We tell ourselves we're not smart enough, we're not good looking enough, that certain things in life aren't meant for people like me. We're lying liars who lie. We lie to ourselves and we lie to others. And why? You know why. Because within every lie, we hide the truth. And as a magician, I've come to learn that lies are the truth, just hidden in plain sight. The truth isn't in a statement like, I'm worthless. The truth is in the belief that deep down we know we are capable of wonderful things but aren't living up to it. So we tell ourselves these lies to try to cover it up. And I can remember the moment that drove that point home for me. And I learned it, of all places, in school. I was 15 years old, sitting in class with a deck of cards in my hand. My teacher walks over in the midst of a lesson I cannot remember and tells me to put the cards away because they were distracting. I reply that my work was completed, and I helpfully point out that the only person that appeared to be distracted by them was her. <laughs> Maybe not the smartest reply. What followed was a classic montage. I was thrown out of class, I was told I was a waste of a student, and that if I kept playing with cards my whole life, I would never amount to anything. And at some point, I started to believe it. So I decided I would skip school, drop out, and chase my dream of being a magician. It all began at Rogue's Magic and Fun Shop in Queens, New York. And one day, this man walks in, and he asked me for some recommendations of what kind of magic you should buy. I show him a few tricks, he picks the ones that he likes, and at some point he asked me, what school do you go to? I replied, Grover Cleveland High School, not thinking too much of it. He looks at me and smiles and goes, no way, I work there. <laughs> it's about noon on a weekday. <laughs> he looks at me through squinted eyes and he asks me, isn't it a little early to be out of school? Nervously, I reply, isn't it a little early to be out of work? <laughs> I then make up a lie. I tell him I'm uh, super smart, I don't have to be there, I get all my work done, I'm like a genius, I don't have to show up, and I pass all my classes. I could tell he didn't buy it. But we ended up having a great conversation, and it turns out he was a science teacher, and I hated science. Not so much the science part, I just couldn't stand my science teacher, the one that they gave me every single year. She, of course, was the one who yelled at me about the playing cards. But that day in the magic shop, this man made an agreement with me that I wouldn't have to go to her class anymore if I met with him each day on his lunch break. He would teach me science for half the period, and I would have to teach him magic for the other half. At the end of the year, he'd give me an exam, and if I passed it, I passed the class. He gave me the test, I actually passed it, and those were some of the only high school credits I ever truly earned. His name was Mr. Lee. And he saw me as a person, took something that I loved and used that to get me into school every day. There's so much we can learn from this. See, this is really a story of a disengaged student that went from high school dropout to high school teacher. Along the way, I'd go to college and throughout, I would end up earning multiple scholarships, academic achievement awards, and graduating with honors. I'd make appearances on Food Network and Travel Channel. And I'm proud to share that I served as the Vice President of Magicians Without Borders, an international organization that uses magic to entertain, educate, and empower at-risk youth in places like El Salvador, Guatemala, India, Colombia, and many, many more. See, Mr. Lee saw that my lie, that I was somehow too smart for school, was in the end actually kind of true. I didn't fail high school. High school failed me. And it's the very reason why I became a high school teacher. I'd like you all right now to think of a teacher that impacted your life. Put that person inside of your mind. Earlier today, you were given a piece of paper. You were asked to write down some information. Everyone had a choice to whatever they had to write down, whatever paper you got, all random. I'd like you to take out that piece of paper right now, hold it up, and crumple it into a ball, to a tiny little ball. You guys are good at following instructions. <laughs> all right, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to hold this just like this, and what I'd like you to do is on the count of three, I'm going to say throw, and it's your job to try to get it in here. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, the basket, not me, okay? Just to be clear, I'm an easy target, please. All right, here we go. One, two, three, throw. 
A lot of baseball fans I see. Oh, there you go. We got one, Kobe. I'm going to throw a bunch of random ones in here. Thank you so much. We'll just end up with a random selection here. Some last, last minute people there I see. Perfect. All right. That works. That's enough. That's enough. Yeah. I'm going to. No, that's good. That's good. That's good. Perfect. Thank you. We'll mix these up like this. Give us a good mix. Awesome. Um, oh, do me a favor. Stand up for me, please. Yeah, you. That's uh, Reach inside. Take one out. Anyone you like, keep standing. Awesome. Hold on tight. You can take a look at it for yourself. Uh, do me a favor. Can you stand up for a second? Reach inside. What do you got? A blue one? You can grab a, a pink one. I guess it doesn't matter. Okay. Take it out. Read it to yourself. Pink one. All right. Yeah, take it. Look at, uh, look at it to yourself. Read it. Uh, whatever information is on there. Some of you asked to write down names, pets, numbers, locations, whatever it was. I don't know what you have. Uh, did you read yours? Do you know what it is? Okay, hold on to it. Uh, is it a name, number, place? What did they end up with? Location. A location. Cool. Uh, so what did you end up with? Uh, write a number. Write a number. Interesting. For the first time, can you tell us what number you ended up with? 238. 238. <laughs> what location did you end up with? Harvard. Harvard, like Boston, like the, the, the place, Harvard, the school? Harvard. Just say Harvard? Okay, that works. <laughs> You know, all of my life experiences brought me to this very moment. Everything I went through, all the pain, the tears, brought me to this very moment. But maybe it brought all of us to this very moment for a reason. You said 238. You said Harvard. I did not tell anybody this, but I found an old yearbook picture of Mr. Lee. I ripped it out of the yearbook, I printed it out, and I enlarged it. And I brought it with me today. The strangest thing is that Mr. Lee actually went to Harvard, and I used to meet him in room 238. Let's give them both a big round of applause. Wow. That is so strange. Uh, some of you are thinking of a teacher right now, aren't you? Uh, I feel I'm like picking from over here. Let's get somebody on this side. Uh, Hi, sir. How are you? You're the only guy there. Sorry. <laughs> uh, what's your name? Damari. Uh, Damari, you had to remember that. Good, Damari. I'm glad. Uh, please stand up for a second. Okay. Are you thinking of a teacher right now? Yes, I got You do? Mm -hmm. huh. Have you told anybody who this person is? No. So it's just in your head right now. Have you seen them recently at all? Um, not recently, but uh, maybe a couple months ago. A couple months ago. Try to send me this person. Let's try to see if we can get a connection between us. Okay. I'm getting images, and I don't know why I'm getting images, but I'm going to put them together because that's very strange. Do you know her first name or just her last name? Uh, I know both names. You know both? Close your eyes for a second. For the first time, in a loud, clear voice, please say her name. Yo, that's actually crazy. What's her name? <laughs> Sarah Lipscomb. Thank you so much. Let's give her a big round of applause. Thank you. What? That's why I got the images. That was very strange. I was like, why am I seeing lips in a comb? The problems I face as a student are unfortunately still issues in schools to this day. Every year, chronic absenteeism increases. Every year, student apathy and disengagement increases. Every year, brilliant students walk away from school thinking they are not worthy of being there, or worse, that school has nothing of value to offer them. I found school to be incredibly disengaging, and I'm sure many students today would agree with me. That's not to say we don't have many fantastic teachers, though, because we do. In fact, in many ways, teachers are already the world's greatest magicians. Day in and day out, they make the seemingly impossible become possible. But the competition for engagement and attention has gone up tremendously. Unfortunately, schools don't respond well to this competition. We spend more time banning things like Instagram, TikTok, AI, like ChatGPT, instead of asking ourselves, how can we use this to better support our students or to prepare them for the future? 
We look at YouTubers and TikTokers as the problem and see social media as a terrible distraction from what's really important. I'm here to offer a different view. As a magician, I've come to understand that attention isn't something you should limit. It is something you should captivate. I believe if teachers were given similar training to what magicians have received in the art of showmanship and engagement, we would see a whole lot more magic in the classroom. And I'm not talking magic tricks. Have you ever wondered how magicians can leave you spellbound, entranced, and eagerly wanting more? It's their masterful use of showmanship that weaves the threads of mystery and entertainment into a tapestry of wonder. Their confidence and charisma captivate us from the moment they walk on stage, drawing us in to their realm of illusions. They skillfully wield misdirection, guiding our gaze away from the secrets hidden in plain sight. But it's not all smoke and mirrors. Showmanship is the heartbeat of magic, pulsating through every gesture, every word spoken, and every silence maintained. Magicians tell stories that transport us to realms beyond our wildest imaginations where the ordinary becomes extraordinary. Audience engagement is their wand as they involve the spectators in the magic, making them essential players in their grand symphony. They use timing and pacing as their allies, building anticipation and suspense into the final breathtaking climax. They are the architects of wonder, and we, the audience, are the willing participants in this dance of showmanship and mystery. Words may feed the mind, but showmanship feeds the soul. Unfortunately, there are no graduate classes on showmanship for teachers. They are not taught how to engage an audience or command the crowd, but every year, new teachers are thrown into a classroom full of kids and are made to figure it out with little to no help. And I'm here to say this needs to change. And I'm not alone in this. Dr. Christopher Emden says that teaching is a performance art, and we should hold it in the same esteem as we hold other performances that capture our imaginations. If the world of education is willing to look in some truly unexpected places to better engage our students, then and only then will we begin to see true magic in the classrooms. I began today's talk by admitting that I've been lying to myself for many years. Maybe we should acknowledge that we have been lying to ourselves about the problems in education all along. The lie that our students are so disengaged and have trouble paying attention. The truth within that lie is maybe we should work harder to give them something worth paying attention to. Thank you. <laughs>